to just honor the mothers and how beautiful and wonderful all the women are in this church. We're going to actually honor all the women who are here, um, mothers or not. Um, this is a really fun thing to do just because all of you women deserve the honor and the special attention. It's also a great way for people who are newer here or just visiting. You kind of get to see everybody's face and hear where they are. If you are newer or are a visitor and you are uncomfortable standing up, please just, when I get to you, just shake me off and I'll keep moving. <laughs> all right? Everybody good? Everybody's good. All right. What we ask the men to do is if they wanted to share something, prepare their thoughts in one minute or less. Um, I'm learning to put timestamps on things because, um, you know, we've gone over in the past and it was a smaller group. So we're going to have to be diligent this week. So laid back old Mountain Matt is not going to be laid back today. So <laughs> tighten up. <laughs> okay. First and foremost, I wanted to um, just ask my wife, Kirsten, to come up here, um, which she did without me asking. Um, I wanted to like, just do her, you know, we're just kind of got to go through the rows, we're not going to pick and choose, but um, I wanted her to come up first and foremost because she is more than just my wife. Um, Kirsten has been my best friend for 23 years. She's challenged me in every way possible and made me a better person as a result. She is the mother of my children and gives everything to make a better life for them than even she was afforded. Not only that, since she was a teenager, she has devoted herself to creating a better life for the lost and broken hearts in this world, standing with people through some of the worst of times and never giving up, caring more about the health of your souls than any other element of life with a deep-rooted belief that if our hearts are healthy in Jesus, then the rest will follow. The depths of her love for God's world isn't conveyed by the words that come out of her mouth, but by the actions born out of her heart. And for this, we honor her today as not only a natural mother, but a spiritual mother to more people than we can count. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. That's my baby. like to stand up and just turn around for everybody to see how lovely you are? Or do you want to shake me off? Like, you can shake me off. Just don't shake them off. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You and Dustin, stand up. Well, Dustin, Dustin, this is the time you stand up with her. <laughs> Dustin and DJ are an item. They're going to be officially married in two weeks. She's a wonderful woman. We, we've kind of known her for years, but I don't get to spend a ton of time with her. But um, she is just a wonderful, sweethearted lady who you would be wise. We, we would be benefited from just getting to know her yeah. some. Agreed. Amen. Do you think you want to say, Dustin? She's amazing. <laughs> amazing. Nailed it. John and Lauren, would you like to stand up? You don't want the one-minute thing to like produce no minute. We gotta average it out, so I'm gonna go over here. Hi. This is John and Lauren Martin, a beautiful couple here, been with us since the um, earliest stages of living room day spring ministry in Amherst. I'm Lauren Dawson, she's she's my best friend, she's great. <laughs> Alright, it doesn't have to be much. It's all beautiful. Very quickly for visitors here, we have an extreme amount of introverts. Um, so like we're like, yeah, we're gonna honor them. They're like, why do they hate us so much yeah. for Mother's Day? Like, <laughs> yeah. Also, just you know, I don't know if you guys noticed, especially the visitors, but almost all of the men are wearing a turquoise type button-up shirt, which was orchestrated by the women unbeknownst to the men. Um, on a day where I really just wanted to celebrate it, how mature and how long you are, you go and do that. I was on your team before. All right, Miss Hannah. Come here, bud. This is Hannah and Jared and Elijah Pepper. Um, they live in Madison Heights. They've been with us at Day Spring here since we kind of formed it in Amherst in the field. 
and Hannah serves on uh, serving the nursery program, kind of organizing all that, and Jared's on the worship team, as you may have seen, also wearing turquoise shirt. He didn't dress himself today. Everybody that, most everybody here knows the journey that Hannah and I have been on, especially myself, over the past few years, and I just wanted to honor her and thank her for everything. If it wasn't for her, I wouldn't be here, obviously. Elijah wouldn't be here. I also wouldn't be wearing this t-shirt. <laughs> but Hannah, you are my everything. You are my favorite. You are my only. Mm -hmm. I love saying that to you all the time, and it's still the truth. Aww. Love you. Aww. Yeah. <laughs> all right, you're going to zigzag the roads. Who is up next? You just come on up. Next up is Ryan and Tori Gilmartin with their young son, Ryland. Amazing young couple from the Lord. Uh, well, where to begin? I mean, I only have a minute, but anyways. I just want to say thank you. Uh, just thank you for pushing me to be the best version of a father and a husband and a friend. Um, you know, we've come a long way. You know, when you, when you meet someone um, that... I mean, the first time I met Tori, wasn't the best interaction, but then as we got to know each other, for those of you who know the story, you know what I'm talking about. But as I got to know her, it felt like I knew her most of my life. And she's just been a friend and someone that I can be weird around and we can both laugh. And she's just as weird as me. Don't let her you know, tell you otherwise. But it's, it's just a lot of fun. So I love doing life with you. Thank you. All right, good shake off, number one. Yeah. <laughs> Could you just stand up, just stand up real quick. Anybody yeah, yeah, just, just so people know who you are. This is Mark and Suzanne Millhouse. They're some of our oldest friends. Um, truly are some of our oldest friends. Uh, Mark was actually the best man in their wedding. And Suzanne was heavily involved in planning the wedding and putting everything together. We've been together for, we've known each other since 1999, which is actually the same time I met Kirsten. So, I have a lot of stories. A lot of stories that we don't tell anymore. Mark and Suzanne are, are function as the elders of the church and they help us make all the decisions and work everything out, all the technical details. They are not only very important in the structure of Dayspring, but just wise and wonderful people to get to know in all areas of life. Thank you. So, uh, Suzanne and I have been married almost 40 years. We have three children, ranging from 36 to 29. Uh, despite her mother's best efforts, Suzanne had to teach herself how to be a mother. And uh, we still actually talk to our children, they still like and love us, and they allow us to see our six grandchildren. Well, we have one on the way. Um, her temperament, her uh, partnership with me, which, which greatly balanced me out, made all that happen, because in my extended family, a lot of people don't talk to each other. And that was one of the things that we had set out to break, and we still have those great relationships with our children, and we plan on having that going forward. It's a thing to cherish, it's a thing to go after, and it's important. So, I thank you very much. I love you. Amen. Heather, we almost missed you because you were on the end of the road. Come with me, Come on. Miss Heather, if this is Heather Maxey, her, her husband Josh Maxey is, is at home with two sick kids. Um, they are integral to the operation here. Um, they work in the children's program um, in the back during Sundays, and Josh uh, and Heather almost really are largely responsible for the Wednesday night children's program that goes on. Um, it is uh, just an amazing couple to get to know. They moved to Amherst a couple years ago. That's where you'll find them. Josh asked me to read something from him. Um, 
To be clear, this is from Josh. Do you want me to read it? <laughs> I can read it. Hey, I just want to say, I dare Josh to get up here and say that he had already said all the nice things because we've done this a few years now and it's such a blessing. But I feel like every nice, like true, beautiful thing that could be said about us ladies is said. But he's not here to do that. He's not here to do that. So he wrote some other things. <laughs> From Josh. Happy Mother's Day, the mother of my children. She is tough and a disciplined woman who has set all her dreams and ambitions on hold to mother and homeschool our kids. Her heart is huge and she pours out love on every one of us through, throughout each day. Sometimes she is hard to get along with <laughs> and seems disagreeable. And then she will turn around and talk baby talk to a chicken. <laughs> I was standing there stunned thinking she was mad. How did she switch that off so quick? In reality, she was never mad. She was disagreeable out of love and had a point on her speech on that matter and the amount of death dying to herself for the sake of all of us is astonishing to me. I'm blessed to have her in my life and my children are too. So on a day like today, every day, she is worthy of our honor. So, I was like, I had time to think about that this is actually what I would say about Heather if Josh didn't write that lovely letter. If, if there is ever a woman who I would say defines the, the phrase, toes the line, it's Heather Massey. She toes the line. Now, a lot of people in life, they kind of draw this figurative line in the sand and hope the wind doesn't blow it away because it means nothing. Heather's like the, you know, the Roman soldiers who lock their shields together and says, yeah. this is a line you go no further. And, and she has towed a line for her family to stand at and go no further for a long time. And apparently it can be perceived as disagreeable, but I would see it as a strong soldier line. <laughs> I was going to add this even before I heard Josh's letter, which is really great, and his heart is so pure and awesome, and he deserves lots of hugs and kisses. But, um, so I, I, Heather's heard me say this publicly, and I've told her this as well, but like, Heather, I don't even know if she knows this or even truly believes it, but like Heather has inspired me and numerous times because Heather has been a woman when everything looked like it could get no worse, right? It just all the like in the natural, it was just some ugly, ugly things and, and just a lot was going on. Their history, they'll tell you one day, you know, um, but like, Yet she'd still say, you know what, though? I choose to believe God. I choose to believe God. And so in the most dark moments, she would just put her foot down and say, I choose you, God. And I choose to march forward as though what you said in your word and even some of the words over her life, like in her family's life, I'm going to do it. And she did. Man, in the midst of some really, really hard, I don't mean like, like, you know, upper echelon hard days. I mean like really hard, hard things. We would say, well, God says just to keep going we're to the point that we were like, oh God, can you give us something more? And she's like, all right, I will. And man, the fruit that has come. I know she still, she'll tell you she's still on a journey, but the fruit in her life. So it's very inspiring. And I know that's really hard for Heather to hear, but it has literally inspired me. And I've gotten in my car and I'm like, oh God, like, wow. So we love you. Yay. Katie and Norman, that's you guys. Oh. Norman shook it off. <laughs> Coming up. This is uh, Katie, I don't know what her middle name is now, Caceres and Norman. Her middle name is always been. I don't, let me change her name. No, okay. I can't keep up with all that. Um, <laughs> Norman and Katie recently got married, um, and... <laughs> okay, last September, because there's some other reason we need to say that. <laughs> well, that minus a couple weeks. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, anyway, sorry, this is Katie. She obviously serves for worshiping for those of you who are visiting. She is... Um, I met recently married, like, we've been married, we've been together for 20-some years, like, they're recently married to me, that's what I mean. 
Recently married, she serves on worship team and in the children's program, heavily in the children's program, has done so for many years, um, faithfully and relentlessly. Norman, is there anything that you would care to say? Norman is extremely shy, so. Um. Oh, no, I just want to thank the Lord for Kate. Kate, you are my favorite person. And as most of you know, we are going to be partners this year, and I'm sure Kate will see the best month in the world. Yeah. Not with their child. <laughs> they actually have like seven kids and none of them are that one. <laughs> no, that's the kind of mom she is. She just grabs random kids. And she them you know, I love you so much. And some of the things I love about her is how dedicated, how strong, um, never say die nursing attitude that she has. Uh, a couple of examples of both. Uh, a couple of years ago, almost, I was hospitalized for a few days, and over those nights, she never left my side. Even when it came past visiting hours, she stuck around. I don't think a SWAT team could have pulled her out. She stayed there, dedicated to me. And then an example of uh, just what kind of mom she is for everything under our roof. Um, about seven weeks ago, our dog had pups, eight pups. And over the course of a day or so, the pups started to look bad, and we actually lost half of them. Well, found out that it's because their mom didn't have milk, and she figured that out. And at that point, I was looking at them, they just looked terrible. I was like, I think just nature is going to take its course, and she wouldn't accept that. She said, no, I'll, I'm not going to give up. So she went, got uh, some little milk for those things, came home, stayed up with them all night long, day in, day out, basically slept with the thing, brought them back to health, and now we have four beautiful puppies. Mark Suzanne's going to get one just because of the kind of mom that she is, and that's how she is to all of us, and we love you so much. All right, it's the Henry family. Ben and Rebecca Henry here, Hazel and Lily as well. Wonderful family lives in Madison Heights. They've joined us. I am horrific with time, so as you may have heard by the testimony with Katie, they joined us some time ago. <laughs> <laughs> Becky, you are the reason I'm in this church today, the reason why my faith is so strong. Um, you guided the family when I was in a very selfish and lonely state. And that's the kind of person you are. You lift me up and make me better. And do that to our children. You are wonderful. She is wonderful. All right. Another couple that really loves attention. <laughs> Nick and Rachel Lavasor here. Rachel is my best friend. She's fun and funny and always likes to find ways to just have good good times with me. And she's the best cat mom ever. <laughs> have the honor of standing next to Laura and loving on her on a beautiful day. So I would, I know her kids and I know that they would say amazing, wonderful things about her and her husband would say some awesome things about her. And so Laura, this is just a, it's a beautiful season, a beautiful time in your life. And it's a time where, you know, with you've got your natural family and I know you're going to connect with them today, but you have a spiritual family that is here and that loves you um, and that you have them on the heart. And um, 
Laura is someone that I know each one of you sees as like this really loving, caring person. Yeah, everybody's shaking their head, yes. Um, Laura doesn't often see it. And so I know that today she's gonna feel it. She's going to see it. She's gonna know it. So we thank you, God, that you're blessing her even in this moment. Even in this moment where she's even had thoughts about walking up here, Lord God, she walked up here with an entire family that's just blessed to be tied to her, Lord. So I thank you for this day for her. We honor her mother heart. We honor everything she's doing in her life with you, Father God. Amen. Amen. All right. All right. You had a brief introduction to Amanda's personal life and her testimony here the other day, a few minutes ago. This is Miss Amanda Poole and Addison, her daughter, her husband George, and other small child Lily are at home recovering. Um, Amanda is a wonderful woman of God who gave her life to Jesus probably five years ago. Right? Give or take. Not good with time. Yeah. Anyway. It was amazing. She's a wonderful woman of God. She not only just, you know, gave her life to Jesus, but she continually gives her life to Jesus yeah. in everything yeah. that she finds yeah. that she thinks yeah. might not be perfect in Jesus. Yeah. She just gives that to him that day too. Yeah. Amen. With gusto. Matt literally said everything I was going to say, so I won't even repeat it. But like with, well, I will repeat some of it. With gusto. She hears from the Lord and she does it with gusto and she's doing stuff that she's never seen before. Like she is a pioneer in her family line. Um, and it's, and it's once again, what I, I tell Amanda, I'm like, I'm so excited because like everything God says, it always, he's always right. It, his promises never fail. And so once again, to see somebody, I'm gonna give this to you, see somebody who just grabs a hold of what the Lord says and lives and goes after it before the evidence is there. And then the evidence comes, like it is inspiring and it's awesome. And we love you. Amen. <laughs> Mr. Uh, Allen and Mrs. Kathy, come on up. Hail from the strange town of Goud. Strange. <laughs> he means that affectionately. Goud, Medin. <laughs> Kathy. person who follows Jesus and if she didn't I don't think we'd be here today as a couple I came back from now and I was a wreck then I finally ended up getting in the VA system and they hand out medication like candy and I was on stuff for PTSD which messes the head up and I didn't realize that and then we got married. And a few years later, I, I thought, I've got to get off this meds here. This is, so I knew I had to come off of it very gently, and I did. And as I did, I finally came off of it, but I didn't know who I was. This stuff is powerful. It's very powerful. I wanted to get away from me, and she stayed with me through all that. Very loving, very kind, very gentle. And when you stick with somebody in a mess like that, that's love. That was her. And after, where's even, it's, she's my check and balances, because I still carry baggage, I guess, I don't know. So I have to, but she does it in a very loving and kind way. She's Jesus' ambassador. And I love her for it. Thank you.
you fought through more than we ever thought we could. They're amazing, but it's also way more difficult than we could ever imagine. And you fought in ways that I didn't know needed to be fought. Um, so you're just amazing. I'm so glad I get to live the rest of my life with you, raising our kids. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Miss Sydney. This is Mrs. Sydney Hughes Rick, apparently not here. Edie is sick. So. Edie is sick. The other child is sick. <laughs> So we had choices to make this week. We chose mom coming to church with all of you, I see. So it's, it's also beautiful. Um, I knew that if, if Rick was here, he would say like all the awesome, perfect things that would reach your heart. And one of the things I know is Sydney doesn't like attention, but Sydney is a beautiful, sincere soul, right? And so it, I know it takes a little time for you to get to know her, right? If, that, if that's fair to say. But it's, it's when you get there, you're like, wow. Right? I, I wish I had tried harder sooner um, because it's very, she's very sincere. She is, she is going after everything with deep sincerity, parenting, things of the Lord. Um, even regardless of what notions you've had before, you're just like, God, I want all of you. And I'm sincerely pursuing you. And it's why the fruit's there. So we're blessed to have her. And, and like I said, even if you're like, oh, yeah, Sydney, I would say when you do get to know you, you are going to say, oh, we should have tried harder sooner. And like, I'm so glad we're here. Miss <laughs> Kayla. I have something to say about your mom. Do you have anything to say, Tulsi? Okay, you just want to stay up here in a mission order. Um, so I, I, you know, some, some folks, I, I was sort of kind of praying ahead of time and the Lord, and the Lord showed me, um, the Lord showed me a flower. Um, it wasn't a rose, but he showed me a flower. And, um, when I was praying about you and, and just, you know, it's that typical, some of you go like how cliche, but we're going to, we're going to, we're going to get to it. Like it was the opening up. And so I was like, wow, God, that is really cool. We get to be around Kayla in this like profound time in her life where she's just opening up to things of your kingdom, God, things of your ways. And, and, and not, you know, she's, she's known the Lord, she knew the Lord and um, um, grew up around it, but she's in this period where she is letting God define her. And so even in the flower, the Lord's like, that's, that's between Kayla and myself. Like, God's like, I'm gonna tell her what this flower looks like. I'm gonna tell her, uh, I'm gonna give her definitions. I'm going to um, make sure when we're done with this, she's gonna know how beautiful she is and how um, beloved and so it was like really good stuff and I'm excited. And so what I would say for all of you guys is, um, you know, you're, you're witnessing something far more powerful than you even know. Um, the steps and the things that Kayla is doing, that, um, the conversations she's having with God, it's like um, history changing stuff. Yeah. And it's really cool. And so uh, with excitement lifts her up throughout the weeks and throughout the months. It's good stuff, and we love you. Amen. Let's see, Covingtons. Do it, I heard that, Jared. Jared's not wearing the right color, so I don't know if we should let him talk. <laughs> so, I don't know how many of you guys know this, but Heidi and I had a very different idea of parenthood. When we first got married, we were both like, we really wanted to adopt, we really wanted to go that route. And we still we still want to adopt, but we kept running into <laughs> we kept running into doors closing and um we eventually decided that it was um time to have kids and Amelia was born. I was doing really good. <laughs> and at the time, Heidi and I were both working, and within like four days of her returning to work, she was like, this isn't going to work. I have to be home with these kids. And she loved her job. Like, she, she's talked about it from time to time, but she is the most self-sacrificing and selfless person that I have ever met in my entire life. And she gave up 
everything to be their mom. She gave up absolutely everything to be their mom. And my favorite thing in the world is when I come home and I see that trait in our kids. set up to make sure you could be a stay-at-home mom because that was always a dream of mine is that if I get married with someone that whatever needs to happen for you you know for them to be at home and raise our children and sure enough that's happened and you know thank you for just everything you're doing a phenomenal job as a mother um, you keep you know and even with our friends who were there with us on our trip like being able to attend our girls, but also even have still the ability to attend also our friends. It's just, you're a jack of all trades, I guess I could call you that. You know, just do it all. I mean, Joe. Master it. No. Joe, sorry. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> but even, you know, even the moments when we were at the beach, like, you know, you could have sat on the beach, on the water, and, you know, wiggle your toes in the water, but you chose to make sure our girls were okay and take care of them, making sure they were okay. And, even if you didn't get the chance to do that, you just did it with joy and with gladness and still made the most of it. And um, that was very eye-opening for me and very encouraging to know that, you know, it, it was healing in a lot of ways in my heart too, for myself personally. Um, and, you know, thankful and I love you. Um, and, yeah. Amen. <laughs> Mr. Rolando, would you like to come up? excitement and wild joy as a young one, like you were really young, I think you were under seven, um, uh, you were exploring things with him, you were having conversations with him, and so I think what's been awesome is, I won't say it's a renewal, because like we've, I, you know, in the time that I've known you, but like you were definitely saying, um, um, give a little context, that she could easily say, all right, Lord, I've gained this knowledge, I've been around these folks, I've done this stuff, um, but she is wholeheartedly saying, God, I, I, I know nothing. I know, I, I just want to know everything that you know, Lord, right? And so the posture of humility and the things that you've been going after, like it blesses the Lord's heart. And um, 
Yeah, and I know that sounds simple for folks out there. You might be like, I don't know what that means, but like, it's a really, really cold one. Boa, turn around. Turn around, Boa. This is Joy Lana's time. Come on now. Come on. Um, it's a really big deal, and it's that posture is a really big deal, and it's why all the things he's spoken of your life, it's going to come true, um, because you're actively getting the posture of a child who says, tell me more. You're right? Instead of spending all your time telling God what you know, like you're just saying, tell me more, tell me more. Boaz didn't even do it. Yeah. Yeah. All right, this is uh, Josh and Bree Curtis, Anson and Avi. Um, they live uh, close across the street. Actually, they are the closest people to Dayspring, geographically speaking. I just want to say I love you a lot. I'm very, very grateful for you. I'm grateful for the mother that you are. I'm grateful for you as a friend. You're my best friend. And I don't, I can't imagine going through life with anybody else. I love laughing with you. I love playing games with you. I just love you a lot. I'm grateful for your support in every way. When you were staying home with the kids when they were little, because that was a need that we had in the family, and now that you're supporting me in our business, you're just always willing to help and support and lay down yourself and be selfish. Is this thing on? <laughs> you got a point of <laughs> Anyways, I love you. Yes. Hey, I mean, Josh spent probably roughly to about 15 years at Outdoor Adventures. Ten. Ten. They're not that old. Ten. <laughs> Ten years serving a, an outreach program where taking inner city kids and uh, taking them on adventures to connect them to the Lord through nature. Uh, it's a pretty neat program. If you're interested, you can ask Bree about it. Come on, Mark. Mark and... Nancy. Yeah, oh, I know. She was talking oh, to me. Oh, sorry. Sorry. I know you, sorry. Names. I'm very sorry. proud of myself for memorizing all the names. <laughs> I didn't get the memo about the shirt. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, you're one minute time limit. We started yeah. doing our story. Oh, uh, you go back. <laughs> it takes forever. But I, I'm so grateful for my wife. She was just an absolute fantastic mother. Um, she was a stay at home mom for 12 years. She raised our kids, um, nurtured admission of the Lord. She told them Bible stories, and, and that Josh, of course, is our son, and Lauren is, is our daughter. Um, and I just can't tell you how much I love I love you. And when I met you, you took my breath away, and you take my breath away now every time I look at you. Aww. And I'm going to stay up and stand for my daughter. Too. Okay, cool. What daughter like to come up? This is my granddaughter. So, you're my daughter. This may make me cry. But the courage you've shown, um, being a mom at 15, and what you did. You educated yourself, became a dental hygienist, and you are a wonderful mother. You are a wonderful wife. And I, I can't tell you how proud I am of you. Oh. And it's just, you, you don't know the story, but it's incredible. And she's just been, she loves the Lord, and she's grown. She was kind of a wild teenager, but she just <laughs> got close to the Lord and just knew her roots because of her mother. And I'm just really proud of her. I can't even tell you. Amen. Um, would you mind your name? Lauren. Lauren. Yeah. So we don't all call you the daughter, you know. <laughs> this don't is worry, Lauren. I your name. So I remember you live north, right? Fredericksburg. Fredericksburg. Yeah. She visits from time to time. So um, talk to Lauren. 
<laughs> I had already had this detail. <laughs> All right. How we got? We're at Steve and Mary. This is Steve and Mary Sawinski. Um, for those of you who don't know, because they might not just blurt this out, um, Adam and Lisa Knapp, who are you know in and out of here from time to time, and we all know Tim and Karen's Adam's dad, but this is Lisa's mom and dad. For those of you who don't know that, I expected someone to go, oh. No. <laughs> Hello, well, we've been married almost 39 years now, and I had a date when she wouldn't date me unless I went to church, so that's so how I got saved. <laughs> um, and a lot more to that. Four daughters, six grandchildren, one of them away. Mary is a stalwart. She is solid. She is constantly challenging me. She's beautiful, and I love her. <laughs> Next up, my mother. <laughs> and his dad. And my dad. <laughs> the um, this is Glenn and Frances Smith. Also lives in Amherst. Um, really, my mother. Wasn't kidding about that. Yeah, I can attest. You can attest. All right. There you go. Um, Mom, we honor you not as only a mother who raised her children to be healthy and successful in this world but as a phenomenal grandmother who devotes both her time and attention to having a true relationship with her grandchildren, yeah. taking them on adventures and spoiling them every chance you get by making them feel like they're the most important people in the whole world. And we bless you and honor you for your mother heart. I believe Enoch might have had something to say. Nice. <laughs> no? Okay. He's back at home. All right. You know, I can always do love you very much. We all appreciate and love you so much for what you've done. We thank you for visiting Day Spring from time to time. <laughs> before you commit to call it our home church yet, but <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna change the name right now. Um, so I've said this before, I think it was a few years back when you were there, but like it is a blessing. You hear these these jokes about mother in laws and like and some of you are, might even be living those jokes, but like um no names, but I, I'm glad, it's, I've told Matt that so many times, like, aside from the fact that, um, I've even called her one time during a wedding where it was, I got to witness something that was a horror, and I called her up, and I was like, thank you so much for being my mother-in-law, and I love you so much, just thank you for being you, and then, that was, like, pre-kids, and then having kids, and you know this is true, because I have said it numerous times, like, it, man, it blesses my heart to have grandparents who just love the boys, and, like, love having fun with them. Like they always feel cherished when you're with them, and um, and I know that's a gift. Like there's no part of me who takes that for granted. Like it's a huge gift. So um, I just want to add that too. Someone's like did it in that, but it's not yeah. a ditto. Yay! Hi, right, Rachel. Big Barry participating in turquoise shirt day. Really? Yay! Go ahead. You have the mic. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> You've done a speech for everybody, so I'm like, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> Rachel, you are a great mother and wife, and um, it, being a parent is hard. And um, for those of you with older kids, and this is not, I didn't talk about Lily here. Lily's great Lily's and amazing. easy. She is, she is easy. She is an easy kid. Uh, but we've been, we've been through some things, and um, the one thing that's a constant in all of this, the kids know this, is your love and um, just how you lift them up and um, are just for them. And they know this. So, um, shoot, I may actually have to, have to, I'll see if I can do this. Um, nope, I, I'm all good here. I'm still in my, I've got about 30 seconds left. Um, I have something to read for you from one of your kids, and she knows this. She knew that this was going to be read. So I'm going to probably look away. This is from Emma. Hi mom, happy Mother's Day. I am very thankful to have you as my mom because you have always been there for me no matter what. There is nothing that could ever make you not love me and you have always been my anchor. I love how kind you are 
and how you put in effort into everything you do. You're the best mom anyone could ask for, and I'm so grateful that I can be your daughter. We love you. Yay. Yay. All right. We have several Rachels here, but only one Rachel Gavinsky. All right, who's next? In the order of the CD. It's a whole back row. Would Kate oh. like to come up? No? Really? Kate uh, McDowell? No? I'm going to bring. Can I just say your name? <laughs> Hails from Concord been joining us here recently has um her her kids often keep her in the nursery so she hasn't had a chance yeah. to fellowship quite as much as she would like but really kind beautiful soul i'm actually going to add to that so she's been in the nursery so much that um i was like man i'm going to be volunteering in the nursery we're going to have so much downtime it's like you're playing with kids it happened to be a nursery day of lots of high needs. I'm blessed to be back there on those days, I promise you. But it was high needs, and we didn't really get to communicate a lot. But what I got to watch is she was all in. Like, it was a time that you could have easily been flustered back there. There was just, you know, there's just days where all the kids were like, yeah, it's a strike. Um, and, and so, and usually, like, I do actually love those days because I love being back there and just bringing the spirit of the Lord and just like, Oh, we're gonna, yeah, everyone's gonna be happy. That's my, and like, without us even communicating, it's like, she's like, I already got this. Here's my stickers that I pulled out and I bring. And so, so I can't even say we've had tons of conversations, but there's a longing. And usually when I hug her, I'm like, I can't wait until we really get to know. And we got to color together. Yes, yes, <laughs> this is true. It's the beginning of many beautiful friendships started with coloring, usually a lot younger, but I, I receive it. So um, I think anybody who, who sees in the spirit, like already, knows you and loves you. Um, and um, and then when we, they really get to know you, they get to love you and know you more. And so, and I don't say that, like you, with enough time you'll realize, I don't just say things to say them, but like I, I genuinely mean that. And so I'm also excited to see you beyond just nursery um, and to have complete sentences. So, we love you. Yay. And our two kids are in the back, so I don't see them. Two kids are in the back. They're not, they're outside, I love. They're outside, all right. So I do say things I don't mean. <laughs> All right, now next up we have a row of visitors. So y'all are going to have to help me. Do y'all like to come up? Would you like to not do anything? Okay. What if they like, would you still like those? You can just, you can okay. just. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. I can at least. I can about Megan. Super blessed to see you. Um, I'm. What, Oh, okay. I'm just going to at least say this, because she's like, must have run. And I'm certainly not going to put her business out there. But I'm really, we already talked about this on Friday. Like, I am so pumped for where you are and what you're doing and the questions you're asking and just, like, what you're, what you're going after. And so I'm being super cryptic on purpose. Um, and it's, and it, it will not fail, because he never, ever fails. He never fails. This is a room full of people who know he never fails. And all we have to do is want it. And it's really awesome. Yeah. I love you. Amen. Amen. This is Megan. Megan. That was Megan. <laughs> Megan also hails from Concord, where our evangelists, Amy and TJ, live. <laughs> Come on up. These guys, I prepared their hearts when they walked in. Yeah, yeah. I was like, how do we do <laughs> Come on up. How you doing, guys? Good. Hi, we're visitors. <laughs> Thanks for letting me take this time to honor Julia. Julia, um, thank you for listening to the analogy that the Lord has given us in motherhood and in your body, which teaches us that Humans were made to care for the growth and development of others and allowing that to radiate out into other areas of your life as well. Thank you for questioning everything um, to the point that we are always trying to find better ways to care for the growth and development of others and everything that we do as a family. And um, I love you. Thank you. 
coming to go to that church but got the times wrong so then she just came here because we were just already open and then she never left <laughs> yeah. um, so uh, yeah oh long story short my mom worked with her mother for many many years and remember Shannon being born and, and yada yada so it seems like the Lord's been bringing this together for a long time even in spite of Shannon's efforts to go to other churches. <laughs> and uh, we just bless her for her heart yeah. to just to just do all that she can do to serve yeah. the Lord and know the Lord and, yeah. and just to connect with people every chance you get. And getting here is not a small feat in yeah. public transportation and whatnot. And she does it twice a week, if at all possible. And we just honor and bless you for your, yeah. your heart for Jesus. Yeah. 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 Miss Betsy. Betsy. Yeah, my crew's not coming home until later today. Has a crew that's not here. And Matt's like, there's nothing to be read for you, honey. So he's like, let me just prepare you. <laughs> Josh wrote a lovely letter for his wife. She's already given testimony today. Um, and so you've already seen it, you've heard it. Betsy came in here and was like, okay. Yes, so like from day one of days, she's like, I'm gonna check everything that I thought I knew about God at the door. And she did. So I would say she grew up with a lot of, there's a lot, you know, a lot of stuff, a lot of good stuff, a lot of not so good stuff. And when I would say the not so good stuff, sometimes, not just sometimes, we are the only limiting factor to God and what he can do, like we're it. And so if we're willing to check it at the door, we get to see mighty, mighty things. And so last week she sees a kid get completely healed in a, um, just things turn around and like in a prayer session and she's like, all right, God, all right, I'm going to take your word, your scripture where you say, let's do this. Let's lay hands on it and like believe. And she's like, I'm doing it. And so she had to check a lot of stuff at the door for that to even get there. And so we're blessed and it's exciting. And like per usual, there's been a theme here. We keep listening to what he says and keep doing what he says in his scripture and the words that he speaks to us. Like, just gets better and better. Amen. Amen. This is red. And just a few of her kids. Not even all of them. No, they're not all coming up. You guys can all come up though. If you choose. I'm not at you. Can I say it's just been real sweet for me to watch him squirm since he found out about this. No. So he's coming back there. Partially, I was last. Yeah. So uh, I get to like sit there and think, I had no idea we were doing this today. And uh, it was the whole aqua shirt thing like actually real? You yeah. Just got yeah. Because yeah. I, just, I just randomly picked God it up. God spoke to you. This is, like, this is like my one aqua shirt I have in my drawer. That's so, crazy. You know. Wow. So I fit in. Yeah. Um, yeah, of course, you're, you're a wonderful mother. We have six children, for those of you that don't know. Our oldest is 21. We just married her off. Just got married. I was a little young. I wasn't quite prepared myself, but, you know, we went through that. And it's, been, it's been a journey. Um, and I think just sitting back there and reflecting on, like, what kind of comes to me. And, and, and really the, the one thing is, I think, uh, just the richness of our life and thinking about our story. When I think about, you know, I've been with you now longer than I've been alive, right? As far as like time period before we got married. And we've been together about 30 years, you know. Um, and there's a lot that we've been through and, and I realize that today's like, today are great because it's easy to take for granted in the day to day, but to be able to reflect and, and thank you guys for doing this today too, it's, it's kind of awesome. Um, this makes me appreciate, we need those times too, like really appreciate those that are around us. and. 
I know for a fact that that I would not want to live without you. I mean, I'd be nothing without you. And that story that we've had, we've been through plenty of trouble and heartache, but love and good times. I only want to continue that with you for the rest of my life. We have a lot more ahead of us. Amen. All right. Okay. It's 11. Oh, how you doing? Do you want to be? You want to go? You want to say? Whatever. Yeah. I'm going to say something. This is annoying. Yeah. So, um, I just wanted to say that I'm really excited about this because I feel like this is the first time we've been able to have this kind of conversation about marriage. And I feel like this is the first time we've been able to have this kind of conversation about marriage. And I feel like this is the first time we've been able to have this kind of conversation about marriage. And I feel like this is the first time I appreciate her commitment to the Lord to follow him and seek him out, even though, um, even in spite of like her family situation, she's still committed to serving the Lord and she's committed to just being a really good friend and loving on others and being open um, and being open hearted. So, um, yeah, this is Aubrey. You should get to know her. She's great. Amen. <laughs> Aubrey, good. Um, okay. We are, it's 11.56, we're really close to lunchtime. I was going to share just one brief thought in scripture. Um, it'll only take me a minute because we won't really break it down. It's actually something we shared a couple years ago, but I do like it on Mother's Day. Um, could I get a couple guys to start getting the buffet opened up and ready? Manny and Jared are going. There we go. Just, that's a good, that's a good. Three guys will do it. Just, they can be opening up the buffet uh, while we discuss uh, just one quick thing. This is just something that I, I spent some time with the Lord years ago, and I think it helps to bring light on some of the scripture. In 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 7, this is a verse that I think is it was largely, I believe, misused because it's it's out of context of the rest of the word and what God says in the way people have understood it historically. But verse 7 says, Husbands in the same way live with your wives knowledgeably as with the weaker ve female vessel showing them honor as fellow heirs also of the grace of life that your prayers will not be hindered. Um, that, that weaker female vessel language has been used against women. Like many religious people have weaponized the word of God to become a weapon for their own personal gain in many parts of scripture. But, you know, the weaker vessel in this case, I think I used an example years ago. I actually brought in a five-gallon bucket. And for those of you who don't know those, Plastic five gallon buckets are incredibly strong. You can set stand on them. You can put heavy things like big, big like cars. You can let a car down on them and it'll hold them up. They're very sturdy, very robust. They only cost three dollars. That is not the weaker vessel, right? That's a sturdy vessel. Um, and then imagine next to that five uh, that five gallon bucket a beautiful crystal, magnificent vase that holds flowers. And it would be, by default, weaker than the five-gallon bucket, but by no means less valuable, yeah. by no means less important, by no means less beautiful. Um, that it's, it's ended that, that weaker vessel stuff with bestow upon them the honor that's due. If it was to degrade and put women in their place, it wouldn't follow it with bestow upon them the honor that's due. Yeah. It's, it's a, it is a, by definition, in that scenario, Yes, weaker. You're not going to stand on a beautiful vase. It'll break. But it's beautiful and it's complicated like you girls. <laughs> and, uh, it's, it's, one of, it's something you would want the world to see, yeah. right? Uh, Kirsten makes me hide all my five-gallon buckets because she doesn't think they're pretty like I do. Um, <laughs> men are more utilitarian, no? And, um, and that's kind of how we go through this life together. We go through life. Men are more like five-gallon buckets, utilitarian. And, and, and women are like beautiful vases that are complicated and intricate and, and they look better on display than the five gallon bucket, but by no means not degraded. So maybe validate to you're not talking about external beauty. We all know that, but for the visitors. Okay, for the visitors, it's not all about external beauty. Don't be so shallow. I was talking about your hearts. <laughs> I kid, yeah, sorry. Um, anyway, Food for thought, uh, that's something we had more time years ago when we kind of went into a little deeper, but just ending on that note, and while the guys are getting the food ready, 
and that'll be all that I'll, my preaching I'm going to do today. I only do 30 seconds or 45 minutes. Those are your two options. <laughs> For today, we got food out, we got grilled chicken, we got salad stuff, we got mac and cheese, we got all kinds of fruits and vegetables. Um, for today, men folk, if you could uh, at all, let's let's not stand off and talk while the ladies that we're honoring today do get all the kids their food. Let's all jump in and get all the kids their food so they can sit down and then let all the ladies go through and then the men will go on the, on the tail end and get whatever's left. Amen? All right. Lord Jesus, we just thank you for this wonderful day and we do honor and bless all the wonderful women in this house. Um, both the residents of this church and the um, visitors that come and go, all of which are your children, Lord Jesus. We just thank you, Lord, as we eat this food. We ask you to bless the food for the nourishment of our body and, and let our conversations be glorifying and edifying of you, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Lord, for the tithes and offerings that come into this house. Give us wisdom on how to further this kingdom on this earth with those resources. We thank you, Lord Jesus. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen.